Thanks for joining us here on Sun News Live. The risk of terrorism targeting expatriates and foreign travelers has increased in Libya. Canadians are now being told to leave the area, most specifically Benghazi. Britain, Germany and the Netherlands are also urging their citizens against non-essential travel, calling it an unpredictable security situation. That's underselling things just a little bit. Security analyst Alex Holstein joins us now, and he's uh, here to discuss the latest developments in Benghazi. This is a two-fold conversation we're going to have today, Alex, Okey because, uh, first of all, thanks for coming in. Thanks for having me back. Not a Happy problem. Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you. Cheers. Um, we saw what happened with Benghazi back on September 11th, and the outcome of that was the dealings that the Congress had to take with the uh, I guess the State Department, yes. and by extension, Secretary of State Hillary Clinton. Mm -hmm. uh, kind of a rocky situation there. Mm -hmm. Very rocky. Well, the, the issue is, is you know, what did the State Department know? When did they know it? Why did af why after the attacks of September 11th did they go out on the air? Not just the State Department, the administration as a whole, or the State Department representatives representing the Obama administration, go out, particularly Susan Rice, and claim this narrative that this was a spontaneous uprising. Um, the the reason that's important, and you heard Hillary Clinton re react to that, what difference does it make? Well, it does make a difference. And big difference. Big difference. And one of the reasons is it's not just because four Americans were killed, including the first ambassador in 30 years on, a, on an administration's watch, but also because uh, the, we have empirical evidence that the administration, A, knew or should have known that terrorist attacks were occurring and being planned against uh, targets, diplomatic targets in Benghazi. Two, that they had had numerous requests to beef up security in Benghazi. Those requests were denied. And three, that they should have known or knew during the attack, at least in near real time, that this was indeed a terrorist attack. And yet thereafter, for weeks thereafter, continued to push out this narrative that this was a spontaneous uprising. So it is an important issue. Which, without question, which brings us up to what's happening with Benghazi today. This is not a situation that occurred just last night. This is something that's been building up for quite some time. Right. And now we have a situation where anybody who goes into Benghazi, their life is at risk. Well, clearly this is something that's been going on for some time. And the fact that the State Department in the U.S. knew about this, yet kept it on the down low, uh, speaks volumes. Yes, well, and you heard Senator Rand Paul take Hillary Clinton to task, Secretary of uh, State Clinton to task on this issue. And during that, while he was doing that, he said, it, you know, the soundbite was that went out on the air was that he said he would have had her removed if he was president of the United States. He would have fired her. But the fact of the matter is, is that what he also said was, is that this is important because Libya was a hot spot. I don't expect you or the secretary, any secretary of state to read every cable that comes in requesting security or whatever. But this was a hot spot. The administration had made this a hot spot. It should have been number one on the list. Now, a lot of the senators, Senator Durbin, for example, on the other side of the aisle, he brought up the WMD issue and, well, you know, why don't we question WMD then? <laughs> well, I would have loved that because, one, we did. Yeah. Number two, they could have asked Hillary Clinton while she was still under oath why, Sen as a senator, she voted for the Iraq War and indeed has numerous quotes attributed to her claiming that Saddam Hussein had WMD in the lead up to the Iraq War, just as the administration did, the Bush administration at that time. So that would have been a good question. But here, it's a little bit different because whereas President Bush was getting reports every day, he did video teleconferencing every day with his generals in charge of Central Command, whether it was Tommy Franks or those his successors, this president clearly was not up to having uh, that kind of communication with a major hotspot that, that had American engagement. Well, there's a larger issue at play here too, Alex, and that is American foreign policy. Uh, the war on terrorism is ever ongoing. Uh, despite the fact that the president's pulling troops out of Afghanistan, that does not mean the war on terror is over. No. It's being fought in places behind the scenes, so to speak. So in terms of American foreign policy, when you have a hot spot like Benghazi, like Libya, I mean, it's the whole country for crying out loud, mm -hmm. and there's leakage from that. We've seen the situation in Mali. How can American foreign policy be that we're not going to go into places like that, yet they're already in places like that, not doing an effective bat, uh, battle to counter the terrorism that's going on there or stemming from there? This is the thing. I, I, I think there's like two extremes here, because on the one extreme, you have the Bush administration putting too many conventional forces into Iraq. I don't think we should have had conventional forces in Iraq. I don't think we should have invaded any country. I don't think we should have invaded Afghanistan. I understand why they did it. But I think in retrospect, and it's easy in hindsight, Monday morning quarterback, I think we should have kept this a completely clandestine and covert war against terror and amped that up and focused our resources on that. Mm -hmm. The Obama administration has done a good job with the drones. They 
they've ramped that end of it up. But they seem hesitant to put boots on the ground. They certainly did in Libya for political reasons, which goes again to their narrative as to making this a spontaneous attack and also why they declined to put more security forces on the ground. They wanted everyone to believe that Libya was a situation that they had solved, that was almost solved. And I think that's what, what played into this. Not necessarily just because there was an election on, but because of what the foreign policy had been and the engagement had been up to that point. Alex, the question becomes now for many people who are observing the situation, are there two levels of foreign policy going on here? What we actually see America doing and what we never should see America doing. It's a whole skyscraper with lots of levels of uh, different things going on. Things mm. that are, are that we should see that aren't being seen. Things that we are seeing that we probably shouldn't be seeing. <laughs> um, it's it's twisted that way, and and it's never going to go, uh, you know, one hundred percent perfect. I mean, nothing happens perfectly, especially in the world. There's a lot of variables involved. But uh, to be strategic, to be proactive in this kind of situation, it was very, it was a very easy fix. It was very simple. Just leave the special operations force that were there on the ground, they wanted to stay. Just put more diplomatic security on the ground. Just make sure that the ambassador was protected. Look, L. Paul Bremer, who was the coalition uh, authority representative for President Bush in Iraq, was a number one target in a war zone, one of the worst war zones in the world, mm -hmm. with, al with the worst of Al Qaeda there. He was under constant threat. He had a phalanx of security around him. He never was hit. The ambassador's never been hit. That, that speaks volumes. All right. So do you, Alex. We always appreciate your expertise. Thank you very much. Thanks for this. Cheers. Our security expert, Alex Holstein.